you're listening to the Sports Circus, and I'm Mike Golick. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, AAMP TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all natural, dry aged USDA prime Wagyu steaks and chops. No, it's not Wagyu. It's Wagyu Steaks and Chops. Wait till you taste their best in class New York steaks. The filet mignon, of course, the king of all, those gigantic cowboy cut and tomahawk cut ribeyes. Best I ever had, probably be the best you ever had as well. Check them out at UppercutChops.com. That's UppercutChops.com. Or give them a call to find out what's for dinner. 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935. 702 for UppercutChops.com. Yes! Boy, those steaks are incredible. Gigantic tomahawk cuts. First it's a steak, and then it's a weapon, right? Because you have that big bone. All right, a big welcome in to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and independents from coast to coast, as well as Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, and WOW Cable Television affiliates and hotel TV in about 550,000 rooms in all Nielsen rated markets. Guess what, folks? We have a fun, special guest right from the top of the show. In fact, we're going to let him introduce himself. Go ahead. Hey, you got me hungry with the steaks now. <laughs> hey, I'm Scott Spezio, uh, a 12 year major leaguer, um, two time World Series champ with the Angels and the Cardinals in 2002 or 2006. And uh, Sal, thanks for having me on. All right. Yeah, that's good stuff, buddy. Hey, listen, those steaks make me hungry every time I mention it. And I have to tell you, I have a freezer full of them. <laughs> it's just stupid. I've never had even even the ground beef. I've never had a burger like this in my life. I'll show you in between break or something Dang. what it actually looks like. Crazy stuff. All right. So, Scott, you you won a couple of World Series, right? Let's get this stuff out of the way right away. All right. But now you won that. You won the first World Series. This, this is always my favorite thing. Whenever I mention the Angels, I always call them the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim of Orange County, the Orange Curtain of Interstate Five of the Santa Ana River bed with the rock pile in center field. Because I could never figure out which name they have. Right? Exactly. Yeah, I remember when we uh, when we won the World Series. You know, in two thousand two, uh, David Letterman asked me to do the top ten list. And uh, that's how he announced it. He's like the California Angels or the Anaheim Angels <laughs> or wh whatever the heck their name is nowadays. And Wait. that's the thing, you know. I I love the Anaheim Angels. I you know I, I still call them the Anaheim Angels. Uh, too much too much wor you know verbiage uh, before it now. Uh, but yeah, we won the first ever uh, and only um, World Series title for the Angels, and you know I'm hoping that they can. Uh, turn it around and and uh, with Ron Washington there and and uh, win some more. Well, uh, I th but I think yeah. Wash is the right guy there. I do. Yeah, you know I I really like Joe Madden. You know I I, yeah. I wish they would have gave him more time. You know, um, but uh, you know it wasn't in the plans. I guess I I still don't understand it. But I think he was. I think Joe was turning around from from the from the minor leagues up, uh, just turning around the culture. And yeah. I just don't think he had enough time. But if anybody can do it, Ron Washington would be the next guy I'd pick. I mean, Ron, uh, I was with Ron uh, with Oakland. Um, he taught me how to play second base mm -hmm. in, in about two weeks. Um, wow. I, Art, Howe had, uh, Art Howe brought me in to, to the office, and he goes, hey, you ever play second base? And I said, oh, yeah, I played it all the time. <laughs> and I had only played three three games in American Legion ball <laughs> right? at the time when I was like 14 or 15 years old and, uh, and Ron, you know, just like the movie Moneyball with Hatterberg at first taught me how to play second in two weeks. Mm -hmm. I ended up leading the league and, and, uh, in fielding percentage, I only had seven errors in 148 games. And, um, you know, it was all, all because of him. Um, he, he taught me everything. He taught me how to play first, which ended up helping me with the angels. And, uh, you know, he's just a great guy. So I'd love to see him do well there. 
Yeah, I think I think he's going to do well. I'm, I was really puzzled myself with the Joe Madden setup. I'm like, how do you not let this guy do what he can do? You know, I listen. I give the Angels fans crap all the time, and it's because of their fair weather fan kind of crap, yeah. right? They, they, they only come out yeah. pretty much when they're winning, of course, or when, when Shohei was over there, right? And now yeah. let's just see how much they fill the stadium up over there. And my brother lives right there at the corner at State College of Catella, right? Because, you know, now they have all oh, those, yeah. those new places right there. So, you know, whenever yeah. I go there, I stay right there so I can walk to the games, which yeah. is great. But I got to tell you, now the real fans will come out. They're still going to support Mike Trout, who I still believe is a top three player in the league. Period. Yeah. Right. If this guy could stay healthy, if he could play the full season, I would argue he's probably the best player in baseball. And it's, I'll tell you yeah. why I don't believe. Well, I'll tell, well, first of all, let me ask you who is the best player in baseball right now, in your well, opinion? Come well, on, man. What I do mean, you got? So, so I, you know, seeing Shohei when he's pitching and hitting, I mean, how do you pick anybody else? I mean, nobody can do it. He does, you know? I mean, so. I mean, he's one of the, the best power hitters. He's, you know, average-wise, he's always up there. He's one of the fastest guys. Um, and then now you're talking about a top-10 pitcher, you know, in, in baseball, too, when he's healthy. So, you know, I, I got to pick him over the last couple of years. Um, but, you know, like you said, Trout's, Trout's one, of the, one of my favorites. You know, I have a little bias because he's, uh, he's with the Angels. But, you know, Harper's a heck of a player. I mean, there's... There's so many good players out there right now. Um, you know, Judge has put up some good numbers. Um, right. You know, pitching wise, it's just who's ever healthy. I think <laughs> it's, so it's hard for guys to stay healthy. There's so many Tommy Johns now. It's like not a matter of of uh, if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when and how many nowadays. It's just too, I think they're just too hard on their arms. Too many sliders. You know, uh, trying to throw a hundred percent you know, the whole time and instead of maybe taking a little off and hitting corners. Um, right. But, yeah, I don't know. Who do you think the best player is? And, and this is a very fast answer for a bunch of reasons. It's Ronald Acuna Jr., period. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, and, that's a good play. That, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you that. why yeah. Otani is not the best player in baseball. Are you ready for this? Sure. Okay. Now, this comes from a former pitcher. And I can tell you, number one, he's a very good pitcher. I'm going to give him that. Yeah. I'm going to give him that. But now, let's take the best player in baseball. What do they do? They play both sides of the ball. Just like, remember, when Michael Jordan was the best offensive player, the best defensive player in basketball. That's the yeah. best player in the game. Otani doesn't play. Let's just say he's pitching. But he pitches once a week. So he's not yeah. technically playing out in the field, offense and defense. He's not playing yeah. every game like the Acunas of the world, the Mookie Betts of the world, the Mike Trouts yeah. of the world. Da, yeah. da, da. And you can't be the best guy if you're not out there playing both sides of the ball every game. Now, th now, now chew yeah. on this one. And a lot of people argue with me on this. I'm like, that's right. Bring an army to lunch. I could do this one all day. Otani can hit the ball. Everybody knows that. But you know where he has a lot of trouble? You know, if he's a friend of yours, my apologies. But I'm telling you as a former player myself, not with your resume, but I will tell you, if you bust this guy up and in, he couldn't hit his way out of a wet paper bag because he ties himself up every time up and in. He just can't hit him. And you know what? If he does, and here's an interesting thing, Scott, if this guy ever hits the ball if it's up and in it's either off the label or he'll yank it a hundred feet foul you know why here's why look at here right there roll your hands over what watch what happens right watch what right what are we doing here right we're swinging the bat but now do this this is how otani does it a lot of people do that right but if you rotate those knuckles and you roll your bat over, the, the bat speed through the strike zone is a lot faster and you can get around on that inside pitch. He doesn't do that. Oh, no. And then he's foot and bucket. He opens up. This guy can't hit that low and away pitch or even the, the up and away pitch. He has a real problem with that. So I would say he's a good hitter, but he's not a great hitter. He's a very good pitcher, 
but he can't stay healthy. Therefore, he can't be the best player in baseball, in my mm. opinion. That's just my yeah, opinion. Yeah. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know, as far as like knuckles, you know. Think about that. Uh, no, one minute. Think yeah. about that. Roll your yeah. hands over, right? Well, go through, go through, go through the a... swing in motion. Come on, man. You, you've hit <laughs> home runs in the World Series the and stuff like that. Come on. <laughs> Well, I've seen him hit some balls up and away. But I understand your point about being, you know, being out in the field every day. And, and Acuna is a heck of a player. I mean, uh, all around, stolen bases, everything. You know, in, in our last 30 seconds of a segment or so, I think that at some point, Ronald Acuna Jr., especially with the bigger bases, right, and all these ridiculous rules, I want to talk about those with you. Of yeah. course, he's going to probably end up passing Ricky Henderson, arguably the best leadoff hitter in the history of the game. I mean, that's, that's what I saw. Yeah. And, and Ricky was one of the greatest trash talkers that I've ever seen as well. But then yeah. again, I think Ronald is that guy. He's, he's a real five-tool uh, five player. And you know who else is? Are you ready for it? Second year, Corbin Carroll. Man, this kid is legit. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he, he really has. I tell you what, folks, uh, we're going to be back here with two-time World Series champion. That would be Scott Spezio from... The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim of Orange County, the Orange Girl of Interstate 5. (laughs) From the LA Angels and from the St. Louis Cardinals, of course. The Cardinals always get a big round of applause on this show. That's why I have a Cardinal right here. Folks, back here in just a few minutes with Scott. Don't go anywhere. Last more to come. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Hello, Americans. It's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. Do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Are you being audited or investigated? Has the IRS sent you a letter demanding payment? You may not owe what they claim. Make this free call to the tax doctor now. Let them negotiate with the IRS on your behalf. 800-296-1209. 800-296-1209. That's 800-296-1209. 
Do you know someone with a drug or alcohol problem? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. Stop the drug and alcohol nightmare. Are drug and alcohol problems hitting you too close to home? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. That's 800-831-1560. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. Thank you, Roy, and welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AMP.TV. Folks, make sure you check out thesportscircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, our recorded shows, which are podcasts. No, we don't do a podcast like three million other of them out there. We do a regular FCC-regulated television and radio show, but our full recorded files are on the podcast platform, such as Spotify and Apple and Google and Amazon and all those others. Anyway, make sure you check out the SportsCircus.com's partner page as well. One of those partners has been with us for a very, very long time is the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Check them out at CSNCoyotes.com for upcoming games and events. CSNCoyotes.com for upcoming games and events. Go get some of those baseball tickets. You know, a guy by the name of Bryce Harper played there once upon a time. And I will tell you what... On the first day of baseball over there in uh, the College of Southern Nevada, on their baseball field, what a great field, by the way, there are 30 scouts there. 30 scouts. Why? Because they produced over 100 players in the system and some, of course, in the bigs today. And believe me, those guys are no joke. And Nick Garitano is doing a great job. We always want to call out Nick and everybody else over there. And by the way, a big welcome in to everybody that's listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Honolulu all the way down to South Florida. In fact, a big hello to our friends over at CBS Sports, 1500 KHKA, that's over in Honolulu, that's home of the New York Yankees and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Of course, welcome in everybody that's in Southern California as well. As you can see, everybody watching on TV, I've got that Orange County flag, the Orange Curtain. That's where I'm at. And, of course, everybody else in Atlanta, we want to make sure we acknowledge you. 99.1 FM, WDJY, home of the Atlanta Braves, WAUD over in Auburn, Alabama, and a whole bunch of other places across the country. And our friends on Chicago Food Favorites on Facebook. Make sure you like Follow, join. It's free. It's fun. I'm the administrator. Who gives a damn? Have some fun. Talk a little bit of crap about New York pizza because we do it all the time because Chicago is really the pizza capital of the world. In case you're keeping score, back here we're two-time World Series champion, and that would be Scott Spezio. And, you know, Scott, in the last segment we were talking a, a little bit about the best players in baseball. Do you know what they also do, by the way? I'm, by the way, I'm sticking with Ronald Acuna Jr. It is what it is. And, and I do like Mike Trout if he could stay healthy. But I want to talk about that uppercut swing that you mentioned in between <laughs> segments. It drives me effing crazy. It, it, yeah. I lose my mind watching these hitters. Talk to everybody about that uppercut swing, what it does, what it doesn't do. Go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, we were, t- <clears throat> we were talking about Otani having problems with the ball up, and I said there's a, there's a lot of people that have problems with the ball up, especially with guys throwing harder. Um, but I think since about 2010, maybe 2012, um, w- with, you know, sabermetrics becoming more part of the game, um, you had these guys from MIT uh, come in and basically say, hey, we need more launch angle, we, we need more home runs. Um, you know, and, and a shift happened, you know, it went from no teams hitting below 240 to, you know, nowadays half the teams in major leagues hit below 240 as a team. And, and, uh, you know, as, as a, as a guy that have, have played with some greats, you know, Albert Pujols and McGuire and, and guys like that, um, you know, and watching others, you know, A-Rod and, and, you know, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. And, and guys like that, you know, I think the, the most guys that that uh, you know are think more level um, towards the ball or direct to the ball. Those guys hit for high averages and hit for power. 
Um, it's a round ball and a round bat. You don't have to swing up to hit it out. If you hit just below center, it's gonna you're gonna put backspin on it and you're gonna have that ball carry, and uh, and you're not gonna strike out 220 times a year. You know, um, I know a lot of people say, well, guys are throwing harder now. Um, we had a lot of guys that were throwing hard. I could care less how hard they threw. If they could change speeds and hit spots, that was much harder. A guy like Maddox was much harder for me to hit than a guy throwing 103, um, you know, and, and the ball just being right there. Um, so, you know, it's it's a big debate. You know, there's some crazy guys on social media that, you know, talk about this HLP swing, and, and it drives me crazy because they're trying to teach, you know, they, a guy like Aaron Judge might use it, you know, at times, and, and uh, you know, and, and do well, but, you, you know, they're teaching it to kids that are so small, and, uh, you know, they're not 6'7", 280 pounds, and so uh, it, 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 there's a lot of stuff about the game that drives me crazy now, um, but it's still my favorite game, and I still love watching it, um, but, I, you know, I still teach uh, direct to the ball, try to hit line drives, if you just miss it, it's going to carry out to be a home run. I like you. I, I never really considered myself a home run hitter. I ended up hitting 120, you know, 123 with, uh, I had 119 in the regular season and three in the playoffs. And I still have the record at, at university of Illinois with 48 in three years. But all I did was, um, was hit, try to hit line drives. And if, if I just missed them, then they'd carry out, you know, but I never struck out more than, you know, I think, 74 times in, in a year. And that was my rookie year. And, you know, when, being with the A's when they first started the whole Moneyball era, you know, we, we were into this thing of, of take pitches. You know, I, so my first year, I was always behind the count 0-1. You know, they always wanted you to walk more than you struck out. And for a lot of years, I did that. I know in Anaheim, I did that in 2002. I think I had 70-something walks and only 50 strikeouts in, you know, 100 and, boy, 150-something games. Uh, so, you know, that's my two cents with the whole uppercut swing thing. Can't wait to hear yours. <laughs> Listen, the uppercut thing, and I will tell you, this is advantage pitcher, which I like the idea. I like to, oh, notice, yeah. of course, for everybody watching, notice the White Sox baseball. Notice the White Sox thing here. We got all kinds of neat stuff here. Even the White Sox Rubik's Cube is over here. But think uh. about this. All right, so earlier we talked a little bit about the hand position, right? Okay. Now, I want you to think about this. Scott, if you are, act like you're, do the, do the swing like you're doing an uppercut, right? So I've got a microphone in front of me here. All right, so let's step back a little bit. All right, so you're swinging upward, right? All right. Yeah. And now, and so you got a problem with swinging upward. And I'll tell you what the problem is, not you, but the people that are out there thinking they need to be doing this uppercut swing. I love it as a pitcher. You know why? Let's do something yeah. real simple. Let's take a flat plane. Here's the flat plane being home plate, right? And now a level swing, what happens? The bat stays in the strike zone over the plate. An uppercut swing, it cuts the strike zone like this here. So the bat is not in the impact area long enough to, like they always say, you know, they always taught like Walter Riniak, swing down, swing, a nice level swing, right? That's how we grew up in, in suburban Chicago, whatever. You're just outside of the outside, right? But this is how we yeah. were taught. It is what it is, right? And so if your bat is in the strike zone longer, chances are you're going to make contact. It's real Absolutely. simple. Right, right. And yep. this is what a lot of people are missing with this. I love as a pitcher, I'm like, great. You go ahead and you get that big launch angle in there. And I'm going to watch you strike out 500 times or whatever the hell it is. But yes. at the end of the day, you're not going to hit the ball. You're not going to put the ball in play that much. And let's face it, you've got to hit at the right sweet spot. If you don't hit it at the perfect spot, that ball's not going over the fence. You could hit it 95 yeah. miles in the air. I mean, who was famous yeah. in the in the Angels organization who hit a lot of pop-ups? There was one guy that I remember like yesterday, and he was a very good player, but he would seem to hit that ball a mile in the air frequently, and that was Jack Howell. He had a lot oh. of pop-ups, right? And it, it looked yeah. like Jack had a little bit of an uppercut swing. And my point is, when that bat is going at that angle, there's a lot less time to hit a line drive. You just got to hit yep. it perfectly. So, Scott, <clears throat> I mean, to your point on this uppercut swing thing, 
it drives me bananas. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. You nailed it. That's what I teach kids now in my hometown here and, and, uh, and do speaking and stuff like that. But when I talk about, um, I talk about the uppercut swing. That's exactly it. Your timing has to be perfect in order to hit it. And the chances of that is very slim. So obviously you're going to strike out more and the average is going to go low, right? You know, be, be a lot lower. And, and, uh, you know, for me, I, I like guys, you know, if you look at the teams that, that I played with that one, I mean, the angels, <clears throat> we had a lot of guys that hit, you know, 280 and up yeah. uh, on base percentages, you know, 350 and up, uh, and, and still hit the home runs. I mean, in 2000, we had, I think we had four guys with over 34 home runs, you know, um, and, and I think the most we had, I think Mo Vaughn struck out like 150 times. Mm -hmm. um, but we had Gloss with 47. You had Vaughn with 36. Garrett Anderson with 35. Tim Salmon with 34. Uh, mm -hmm. Earth had hit 25 as a leadoff guy. Right. All those guys had 97 RBIs or more. Nowadays, that that's the you know I had 17 home runs and 290 at bats and and uh, 50 RBIs, you know it, like we we basically and you got guys like Eckstein, uh, Adam Kennedy, Benjamin Molina, we got on base and we we hit you know we'd hit behind runners whatever we had to do right you know, to to make sure we we're scoring runs even against good pitching we're not out there striking out. Well, and you know what here in our last 30 seconds that was. I mean, from an offensive standpoint, this was a team that did a lot of things right. They really, they moved the runners over. You had guys that could hit for power, guys that could hit for average. The ball was being moved around. The ball was, it was sacrificed. You had speed on that team. Yeah. It was the perfect storm in Anaheim. And I moved out to Southern California in 1986. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of baseball games in that stadium, buddy. And I got to tell you, yep. that was a very good squad to watch. Tell you what, folks, we're going to hear a little bit more about that in just a few minutes when we come back with two-time World Series champion. That would be Scott Spezio. You know, they used to say world champion. We're going to say two-time world champion just because we can. Back here in a few minutes on the Sports Circus. Don't go anywhere. Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. If you have diabetes, listen up. If you have insurance, you can qualify for a continuous glucose monitor. With a CGM, you can continuously track your levels and trends and spend more time in range, significantly lowering your A1C. More importantly, a CGM eliminates the one thing most people with diabetes hate, painful finger sticks. Order your new continuous glucose monitor today. If you use insulin and if you've seen your diabetes care provider within the last six months, you may qualify for your own CGM right now. We'll do all the insurance paperwork and deliver your new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. Medicare and most insurances will cover your CGM, so don't wait. Have your insurance handy and call the Aptiva Medical CGM Health Hotline right now. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. That's 800-320-2751. If you served in the Marine Corps, by now you know about the contaminated water problem at Camp Lejeune. If you were stationed or worked at Camp Lejeune from 1953 to 1987, you probably have a lot of questions. We have some answers. You could be entitled to compensation. Billions of dollars are being allocated to pay for damages to anyone stationed at Camp Lejeune during that time. 
Unfortunately, it appears that officials may have known the contaminated water problem existed and did little to protect their men. The Semper Fi code was not honored. If you or someone in your family has developed a serious illness, including various forms of cancer, call this Camp Lejeune legal support line right now. You can't turn back the clock and change what happened, but you can certainly call right now and learn your rights as a Marine. Here's the number. Call 800-335-7196. 800-335-7196. That's 800-335-7196. Paid for by Legal Alert Line. Hey everyone, Dave Jackson here, ESPN Rules Analyst on ESPN Hockey, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. This is Scott Spezio, two-time World Series champ. Uh, if you need to reach me, reach me at Spezio Baseball on uh, Facebook or uh, Spezio Baseball 21 at gmail.com uh, for any speaking engagements or, uh, or anything like that. All right, that's good stuff. And we love this impromptu, bring it back, just because we can <laughs> here on the Sports Circus. I mean, that's the fun part about doing what we're doing here, because you never know what the hell's going to happen, right? And it's kind of like going that's to a right. baseball game. Scott, you never know if your team's down 5 to nothing, as you were saying on the break, that a team would come back. Tell everybody that story real quick. Oh, yeah, game, game six of uh, the 2002 World Series uh, is probably my most famous at bat. We, you know, we were down... Uh, five nothing, um, you know, in the bottom of the seventh, uh, with one out, uh, Gl- Troy Gloss gets a hit, Brad Fulmer gets a hit. Uh, this is kind of a, a crazy story. Dusty Baker goes out to take out Russ Ortiz, uh, gets the game ball from him, and then he tells him to come back, gives the game ball back to him. And, uh, right then I thought, oh, these guys think it's over, you know, and, uh, I ended up hitting a, you know, on the eighth pitch on a three-two count. I ended up hitting a, a three-run homer, and it turned the whole tide around. Um, and uh, you know, the rest was history. We ended up winning that game six-five, and then won the next day four-to-one. Um, yeah, yeah. So you never know. You, you never no, know. man, never you, know. you never know what's going to happen. And I love yeah. the fact that you know the. Let's face it, folks. The Southern California fans, generally speaking, generally speaking, they seem to show up late, and leave early. Now, I don't know about you. I mean, Scott, look, we're from greater Chicagoland, right? When we go to a game, we commit to a game, what do we do? We go to the game. We're there before the first pitch, and typically we're there all the way to the brutal end, right or wrong? Oh, yeah. I mean, Chicago or St. Louis, um, people are (laughs) People are showing up hours before the game yep. and, and hanging around, and then hours after the game, they're hanging around the area as well. Um, it's a little bit different in Southern California. I don't know. Maybe it's the traffic. Maybe. I, <laughs> I don't know. But, but I, I remember we'd always, you know, we'd always say, boy, it's uh wonder how many we're going to get. You know, it would be the third inning. And then, you know, around the fifth inning, it would kind of be full. And then about the seventh, people start leaving, you know. I had a lot of people tell me, uh, you know, about that game six home run that they were either in the parking lot or on their way home uh, when I hit that oh, home run. Geez. And I'm like, wait a second, you, you paid money to come to that game and, and you left early. And, and uh, that's just, you know, that's, it's, a different, it's a different way of thinking out there. The, the mentality is unbelievable. And they deserve an astounding round of booze because the mentality <laughs> is so off. And I can tell you, when I go to games, even here in Las Vegas, I'll go watch the, the A's AAA team, right, which is the uh, Aviators, yeah. right? I'll watch the game, and it doesn't matter what the score is. Here we're in the seventh inning or the sixth inning, and people are running back to their cars. Like, first of all, we don't have Southern California traffic here like they do in Orange County or in L.A. yet. But, but half of Southern California right. lives here right now. That's another discussion. But anyway, yeah. I'm always when I see them walking back, and the game's going on. I'm like, hurry up. You'll be the first one to your car, if you know what I mean, right? 
<laughs> right, you'll be the first one out of the parking lot. I, I don't understand yeah. that mentality. And they want to slow the, or they want to speed the game up, right? And what do we like as kids? We like bonus baseball. We love yeah. the extra innings. Yeah. What do you think about this BS extra inning man on second crap? Oh, I don't see. There's a lot of the new rules I don't like at all. Um, you know, I don't like the bigger bases. I I don't like the pitch clock. Um, oh, you know. No. I guess it worked for him, but to me, like I went, you know, I went to a, a couple uh, a Cardinals games, and uh, you know, I had to do like an interview, and then uh, you know, go say hi to a few people. By the time I got back with my with my family, it was like the seventh inning already, you know, and, and the games go so quick now. I like getting there, you know, early, you know, uh, seeing batting practice if possible. You know, and, and then hanging out till the very last out. You know, they got to shoo me out of there usually. Yeah, and you know what? The idea that fans leaving games early, to me, it's just wrong. Why are you even there if you're worried about getting home? When you're at yeah, the game, right. be at the game. Don't be taking a million selfies and crap like that. It's because of those people that we have netting around the whole damn stadium, seemingly. <laughs> right. And yeah. Scott, I got one for you. I got one for you. This is the 2009, I think it was 2009 World Baseball Classic. It was nine, right? I think that was the mm. first one. So I'm at Dodger Stadium, and I'm at the game. I'm even with the right fielder. I'm just a couple of rows off the, the foul wall, right, into the seats. And I'm sitting. It was USA against Japan in that game. And... Who's up? Oh, uh, Adam Dunn is up, right? Frozen mm. rope, Adam Dunn, if he wasn't striking out, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it is what it is, right? <laughs> but anyway, so Adam Dunn is up, and I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm literally turning, right? Instead of facing the right fielder, I'm turning this way thinking, I better be ready. And I'm thinking, yeah. God help me if he hits it to me because it's going to break my hands. But anyway, I'm just yeah. now it's self-preservation. So I, I kid you not. Here goes Adam Dunn. He hits a ball probably 15 feet off the ground, and it is screaming. It's coming. It's And I'm turning. I'm like, okay, it's going to hurt, but I'm going to catch this damn ball. And so I go, and literally, it's 10 feet from me. I'm like, and then it hits the Japanese chick next to me right square in the side of the oh head. My gosh. I couldn't yeah. believe it. And here's the crazy part. What was yeah. she doing? First of all, she was busy doing this on her telephone, right? Yeah. But yeah. trip on this, you're not going to believe this. After she got hit, she went, and she went right back to her phone. I, I've God. never seen anything like it. This this chick just got hit with 110 whatever off of that bat, 300 feet away, and it was as if it didn't even phase her. I couldn't believe it. Maybe, maybe she's got a titanium plate in her head or something. I don't know, but it's because so, of people screwing around on their telephones, yeah. taking selfies. Hi, look at me yeah. checking in here and all this other crap. It wrecks it for everybody. Now we got to watch the game like a bunch of kids in kindergarten that's behind some yeah. ridiculous safety yeah. net. Yeah, and then it, it takes away from, you know, I, I understand, you know, the liability and stuff because people don't pay attention. I mean, I hit, a, I hit the same lady twice in one game in St. Louis when what? I was with the Angels. Hit her in the chest, and then later hit her in the head. Uh, yeah, in the same game. <laughs> it's crazy. <What? laughs> but, uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's kind of humorous, know, but it's ridiculous. Go ahead. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it takes away, like, kids, you know, it's hard to sign autographs, you know, down the lines and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it, I liked it. I, I, I liked being a part of the game. It keeps you involved in it instead of on the phone. I, I don't right. understand it. You know, people at concerts, they're, they're – you know, watching their phone video and everything, and they don't experience the game or the concert or whatever it is, whatever the event is. You know, I, I understand, like, okay, take a couple pictures and maybe a video, but then put the phone away. You know, you right. don't have to uh, sit there and record the whole thing. Uh oh, there's a squirrel out here. My dogs are eyeing it. Oh, uh, that's so okay. Let them <laughs> go get them, kid. Come here, Clips. Go get them. Come here, Clips. Attack. Do, do what you got to do. But, you know, I think about the way those balls are hit. And I've got, I've got something for you here. So this is, everybody seeing on TV and on, on radio, whatever, this is a ball that Walter White's hit at Old Comiskey Park. And 
it was in April of, I think it was 1989. And so it was cold. And you know the April games at Old Comiskey. Oh, man. Yeah. It's a little chilly out there, right? It's a little nippy out there, if you know what I mean. And so yeah. in our last two minutes, this is fun stuff. In our last two minutes of the segment, and I'm thinking, okay, Walter, I'm right next to the foul pole in right field. Because I'm like, yeah, I know where these guys hit home runs. This is perfect. So I'm in the front yeah. row, and I've got a friend with me. And here it comes. Walter hits the ball, and I'm like, I got it. I got it. I got, it's coming right at me. And I'm, it's, again, 10 feet in front of me. And what did I do at the last second? I went like this. I ducked. Oh, no. I, I did that on purpose because there was this kid behind me. He, was, he had his face in a giant piece of pizza. He couldn't care <laughs> less about anything. And I kid you not. It's a true story. This ball went right over my shoulder, bounced off his belly, Onto the floor, it rolled in front of me, and I picked it up, and I got it. That's how I got this ball, and I'll never forget that story. It's just one of those things, you know, you don't forget. Because, you know, when someone's got their face in food, especially pizza in Chicago, for all you people on Chicago Food Favorites on Facebook, you know what I'm talking about. Great pizza. You're not worried about a baseball. Oh, hell no. You're worried about that piece of pizza. But, you know, there's a difference in this ball, and I can feel the difference versus this ball. Now, what's this oh, one, yeah. Scott? Yeah, 2005 World Series, yeah. There is a difference between these balls, and you can feel it. I mean, it is what it is, and you can feel yeah. this one is wound a little bit tighter, not because this one's used. I mean, I, could use, I can find an older ball, but there is a definite difference in these, and honestly, there is a slight difference in the size of these two. I don't know if you could see it, but these are legit. Yeah. I mean, and you, yeah. you see what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, absolutely. This one is yeah. a little bit bigger. The 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 old or the newer ball is a little bit bigger. So, and I can assure you, these balls are flying out of the yard for a very, very good reason. In my opinion, oh, he's a conspiracy yeah. guy. No, he's not. I'm holding up two baseballs from two different times that are yeah. twenty odd years apart. Tell you what, folks, when we come back, we're going to dive into this baseball questioning and the rules and all this other crap. Don't go anywhere. Last more to come here with two-time World Series champion. That would be Scott Spezio from the Angels and from the Cardinals. Back in a few. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged, USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged, USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average and best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com If you have diabetes, listen up. If you have insurance, you can qualify for a continuous glucose monitor. With a CGM, you can continuously track your levels and trends and spend more time in range, significantly lowering your A1C. More importantly, a CGM eliminates the one thing most people with diabetes hate, painful finger sticks. Order your new continuous glucose monitor today. If you use insulin and if you've seen your diabetes care provider within the last six months, you may qualify for your own CGM right now. We'll do all the insurance paperwork and deliver your new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. Medicare and most insurances will cover your CGM, so don't wait. Have your insurance handy and call the Aptiva Medical CGM Health Hotline right now. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. That's 800-320-2751. If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know the pain of pricking your fingers over and over again. 
Ouch! Well, by wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, you can reduce the pain of pricking your fingers. If you administer insulin three or more times per day or use an insulin pump, call now and learn how a CGM can help you. Painless. No more pricking my finger. No finger pricks. Convenience. They delivered it free and they took care of all the paperwork. You can reduce pain right away. Plus, it's accurate, easy to use, and helps you spend more time in range. And if you have insurance, you can get a new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Call now and get free shipping of your new CGM. Plus, we'll bill your insurance for you. 800-659-7805. 800-659-7805. 800-659-7805. That's 800-659-7805. Hey everybody, this is Brian Erlacher. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. Folks, make sure you check out thesportscircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, recorded shows, and all of our partners as well. Lots of great guests coming up. In fact, the great Brian Erlacher is coming up here real soon. Of course, big round of applause for Brian and even Wayne Newton. Yes, I mean, look, it's sports, it's entertainment, television, radio, uh, film, whatever, science, business. This show started off as just a radio show at 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning here in Vegas, and it's blown up. We've done thousands of episodes, lots of fun stuff. Great guests, just like our guest today, Scott Spezio, won a couple of World Series, one with the Angels, one with the Cardinals. And, of course, we applaud the one more with the Cardinals because I'm the anti-cub for all you people out there. <laughs> and, you know, Scott, we did a segment one time, and I'm going to ask you, we did a segment a long time ago, and... Oh, geez, I think this was a good five, six years ago. And it was the sports genie, right? So you got to ask the sports genie one wish. If you had one wish in sports, just one, what would your wish be from the sports genie? That I could still play (laughs) right now. That would be be my wish, that I could go back and play right now. Plus, yeah. the money's a lot better, too. No, oh, the, the money is ridiculous. I mean, come on. We got paid 1200 bucks a month. Don't even talk to me about that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, it was about eight fifty my first spring, uh, my first uh, uh, minor league uh, team, about eight fifty a month. Yeah, Crazy. People, people don't know this stuff. I mean, it was tough yeah. sledding, buddy. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so yeah. the sports genie, you say you would like to play still, right? Yeah. So that would be fantastic. Okay. Well, somebody once asked me what I wanted from the sports genie. And this is how hardcore White Sox guy I am. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, the Cubs lost me after all their trades and this and that, getting rid of everybody. The final yeah. straw for me was Bruce Souter going ah. to the Cardinals, right? <laughs> and that's yeah. it, right? And for me, it was like, all right, yeah. that's it. If you're going to deal Bruce Suter off to the Cardinals, that's when I bought my first Cardinals hat. That was the end of it for me. And so, yeah. when they, Scott, when they asked me about the sports genie question, and I had said, okay, if I had one wish from the sports genie, it wouldn't be for me to be able to play. Da, 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 da. No, it would be the magic number of 162. We all know what that number is. So anybody that knows anything about baseball. Well, for me, it was to see the Chicago Cubs go on an 0 for 162 streak. That's exactly (laughs) what I wanted. You know why? Because nobody would ever forget a team that lost 162 in the row. I mean, sometimes they forget who won the World Series last year or the year before or whatever, but you'd never, ever forget who won on an 0 and 162 streak. (laughs) It is what it is. That's pretty cool. That's pretty funny. That, yeah. that, that's my dream from the sports genie. But anyway, 
So I, I told that. you, I t- <laughs> that's great stuff. So I told you at break, yeah. uh, we had this, we had this ball issue here, right? We had, we had two baseballs up here, right? And here's a 2005 World Series baseball, and then here's a 1980, 1989 Walter Weiss home run, Oakland A's against, uh, I forget who was pitching for the White Sox. Anyway, it was caught at Old Comiskey Park. All right, now. These baseballs feel different. They weigh different. And look at the size, everybody, as I'm fumbling my microphone around. You can see on television. Look at the size of these baseballs. Now, these are, these are side by side. I'm not trying any trick camera, anything. Scott, do they look even to you? Yes or no? They don't. No, they, they don't. You know, uh, yeah, I think balls have, have uh, they've changed over the years for sure. Um, you know, and, and, and like we were talking about in the break, it, it seems like, uh, you know, there's years where boom, home runs just spike. Uh, maybe they're, t- you know, like you said, they're using the all star game uh, home run derby ball <laughs> that year. Uh, right. You know, people had said, you know, I heard stuff about, you know, maybe when uh, 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 with the Yankees guy, I can't think of his name now, uh, Judge, Aaron when Judge. he, uh, when he had that, like the second half of the season, they were using special balls, and you know, there's there's been some other stuff said, but you know, I, for me, I just wish that you know, I know Major League Baseball also too, and I think they raised the seams a little bit one year because uh, pitchers were complaining that seams were too low, and and which caused less you know friction with the air, and and uh, the balls were jumping out, and so I think baseballs have been down since then, or home runs have been down since then, but. Uh, I wish they just had like a third party independent, uh, you know, team that just yeah. regulated the baseball so they were the same for everybody all the time. Well, you know, uh, it, buddy, we're not going to see that anymore because Major League Baseball owns Rawlings and Rob Manfred keeps yeah. screwing with the baseball. Check this out. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you one other thing. Okay, remember that 2005 World Series baseball right here, okay? And here's yeah. the ball. For, it's one of the rarest baseballs that you could find today. Oh, wow. And that was the huh. game that was never played. Remember the strike huh. here? Yeah. The White, the White yeah. Sox were rolling. And guess what? Yeah. Right? Strike here, that's it. All right. So yeah. now here's two different baseballs again. And I want you to look at these. These are two World Series baseballs. I'm holding yeah. them side by side. Is there a size difference? Is this not an optical illusion? I'm not. I'm not screwing with the baseballs. It sure seems to me that the 2005 ball is maybe just a touch bigger than the '94 World Series baseball. Yeah, and you can see the seams are different too. You know? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And f- for everybody watching, here, let me see if I can line these up. Everybody watching. Oh yeah, I mean, look at the '94 seams. They're bigger. Look at how yeah. compact the 2005 seams are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely. And, and that's see, that's the thing. Everybody watching or listening on our radio, you'll have to go back and and watch the video on this. But at the end of the day, Scott, the game has been tinkered with so much, and it, it just drives me crazy because I'm seeing bigger bases. The pitch clock drives me insane. And now you got yeah. guys. You can look. The pitcher can only do what? Make his move twice to first or another base and the third time you got to pick them up otherwise they get an automatic advancement yeah i i I can't i hate the moves you know we're gonna end up looking like the savannah bananas soon here i think and you know having having also you know foul balls will be if the fans catch them they'll be out um but yeah you know it, it drives me nuts you were talking about ricky henderson earlier um, you know, guys like him, Vince Coleman. I mean, if they had these rules, they might steal 200 bases a year. Right. Uh, you know, bigger, bigger bases. You know, less, less ground to cover. Uh, you could. I mean, I think there was a there was one with Vince Coleman. I saw a video where they picked over like 14 times or something like that in right. one at bat. Yeah. Um, you know, if he knows you can only pick over twice, he's going to have a pretty dang good jump over right. there. He's you gone. Yeah, exactly, and and uh, so yeah, it's a different game. I don't, I, I definitely don't like the the pitch clock. You know, we never had issues with that. I mean, I remember playing games, uh, you know, with with guys like Chris Carpenter on the mound, mm-hmm. or or uh, we had a game where it was uh, Burley versus Ryan uh, Ryan Franklin, um, 
early in the season when you're when I was with Seattle, April in, in Chicago, that game was done like in an hour and a half, it seemed like. Um, you know, and, and guys just got on the mound and went, you know. Um, so, it's, yeah, I, it, a lot of things have changed. I, I wish they quit t- tinkering with the game. It's, it's a great game, and um, it's, been, it's been the same for a long time. Um, but hopefully that's the, the end of it, but I, I doubt it. All right, quick questions. We're going to take about a minute and do some quick questions. To speak. Just because we can, let's mix it up a little bit, right? Sure. Favorite park? Oh, boy. You know, I I did like Anaheim when I was there. Um, you know, I, I still like it. It's, the playing surface is phenomenal. I, that's probably the biggest reason I like it. Um, St. Louis is amazing. Um, I've always I always liked Pittsburgh, and I liked um, uh, Baltimore. Um, you know, old Yankee Stadium. When I walked in there, it just gave me chills, and and uh, that was one of my favorite places to play uh, is old Yankee Stadium. But uh, those are probably my my biggest ones. Best clubhouse. Oh, um, boy. Uh, I'll tell you what wasn't the best clubhouse was the Chicago Wrigley Cubs Field? on the road. <laughs> I knew you were going to go Wrigley Field. <laughs> that was horrible. And, and the playing surface was horrible when I was there, too. Yep. Um, you know, I know they've changed some stuff up there, but, man, that was one of the worst. Uh, old Detroit Stadium, Tiger Stadium was horrible. Old Fulton County Stadium in, in Milwaukee was bad. Uh, Boston Fenway was bad. Um, but uh, my favorite, prob- probably St. Louis, you know, the home one. Uh, that was probably my favorite. Best broadcaster for baseball. Oh, geez. that That's a tough one. Come on, man. What do you got? <laughs> I mean... Oh man, you know Harry Carey was with the with St. Louis when my dad was there, and then he went to the Sox. I liked him there, you yeah. know. Uh, um, but uh, shoot, what am I doing here? Uh, I got uh, I got one more sorry, question for you. I got you. something coming on my phone. I'm trying to get it off here. <laughs> uh, don't, uh, don't worry um, about it. Don't worry about it. Broadcasters, I you know I li- I like Jack Buck. Um, he he was great. Um, yeah. Tim McCarver, I liked him too. You know, my dad played with him, and then he called my home run, so that was pretty neat. <laughs> right, right, right. Best stadium food? Uh, you know, I never really ate that much stadium Come food. Come on, you got to um, give me something. We're running out of time. Uh, I don't – that's a tough one. I don't I don't know. Seattle had some pretty good food yeah. there. I, I like Seattle's food. As do I. Okay, listen, we got to – Take 30 seconds, tell everybody how to follow you, how to go to your camp, how to get your speaking engagements, etc. Go ahead. Uh, dude, follow me. Spezio Baseball um, is, is on Facebook. Um, I have, uh, I have a, a Twitter account. I'm not on there a ton. I think it's like Scott underscore Spezio. Um, and then uh, I've got an Instagram account, um, a personal Facebook account. Uh, my email is Spezio. Uh, baseball, the number 21 at gmail.com. Um, I've been doing a lot of speaking, you know, I, I, I had issues with, uh, with drugs and alcohol late in my career. And, and so I talked to schools about that. I talked to, you know, charities, um, I t- talk about me and my dad's career and stuff like that. And so I've been doing a lot of that lately. And then, uh, I do lessons in, in camps and stuff around my hometown of Morris, Illinois, um, which is 60 miles Southwest of Chicago. All right, that's good stuff. Hey, listen, Scott, it's been a pleasure. And listen, you're always welcome back here on the Sports Circus. We'd like to have you back. Who knows, maybe we'll have you do some correspondent work for us. I don't know, whatever, we'll figure something out. Anyway, thanks for joining us today. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, for Scott Spezio, two-time World Series champion from the Angels and Cardinals. We'll see you in about, oh, I don't know, 23 hours, right here on your favorite station. Until then, so long, everyone.
Can your IRA stand up to the next financial crisis that our top economists are saying is at our doorsteps? By allocating a percentage of your IRA into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns by putting your IRA back on the gold standard. Find out how to safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report. Protect your IRA today with one simple phone call and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. Call Genesis Gold Group, empowering faith-driven stewardship. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. That's 800-932-5517. 